So my latest project, Songs of Love from Hawaii, came out. And um, even though I wasn't quite sure if this would be okay to have two languages in one, on one screen, because I didn't, even I didn't see any films like that, but luckily it got, you know, um, picked up by PBS Hawaii, and from that point, I was able to um, get a theater release deal in Korea, which is very rare for independent film like ours. It's showing in theaters in Korea now, and we're so, we're so fortunate to be able to tell this story with using, you know, two different languages. So today I brought a short scene from Songs of Love that summarizes the second story of the film. It's about a woman named Lee Moksu. Guess how old she is? 16 is a good guess. Okay, so she was 17 years old. Do you know Picture Bright, what Picture Bright is? Have you guys heard of Picture Bright? Can you guess Picture Bright, what is it? <laughs> okay, so in the old days, I told you that um, 102 Korean guys came to work in the plantation. Who are those people, you think? They're usually young 20s in their 30s men who can work in the plantation, wants to make money. They had a problem within you know, two and three years. What is it? They couldn't find the bride who will marry poor Korean guy working in the plantation, right? So then um, the farm owner had this idea of bringing the bride from Korea to marry these um, farm workers, Korean workers. Because when they have a family, they are more, they work hard basically. So these women, about like 700 women from Korea, just saw this photo of a guy Challenging, I mean, risking all they had, like they wanted to have a better life as well. You will see a life of Imoks and why she made that decision and what happened after. It's a story of a one, you know, ordinary person who made a, um, like a real, real beautiful story of her own. I think this is a real success story. Are you guys ready to watch it? Yes. Okay, so this was a 30 minute um, film, but I made it into a 10 minutes, so. Let's see how it goes. really added um, depth to the characters and because that's the language that actually Gary and um, his grandma used in real life. And um, I think it shows the language isn't just about talking, it's really about connecting with um, people. I hope my story has inspired you to explore languages and culture in your own way. And now I'd like to invite Mr. Dicker, um, who is a renowned filmmaker himself and a, and a professor um, um, to the stage to help me have discussion with you guys in case you guys have any questions for me or uh, Mr. Hicker. Thank you. Let's move our chairs over here. Uh, well, um, we've done this a couple times now. Uh, it's good to have all of you here. I, I'm curious just uh, from making that film and you as a professional musician in the background, being a professional musician, now being a filmmaker, and how you incorporated both of those things in this film so well. How did that come about? Um, I do believe that music um, 
is powerful, really powerful, especially when it's performed by great musicians like that with the right story, right music. It can um, do much more than words can do. And that's why I wanted to have the help of music to tell your story. And um, that's funny because if I can share a little bit of my story, I wanted to become a cellist um, when I was growing up. My mom thought that I would become a great cellist, but I failed to, to become a cellist. I, didn't, I just didn't have that, 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 um, that talent and the passion to, to pursue. But, you know, later in life, I realized that even though I didn't become, a, I couldn't become a cellist, the time that I put in to become a cellist, like all those hours of like you know practice, really helped because now I understand how music is so important in our lives and in my own uh, personal journey as well of becoming a filmmaker. And to be able to use it in my film, it really um, was a you know huge part. Um, so I just you know wanted to say that also on top of um, the filmmaking itself, like whatever you guys are doing. You never know how it's gonna help you uh, pursue your dream in the later in the future. So, you know. And there's a discipline to both. A, dis a discipline to studying music and becoming a musician and, a, and becoming a filmmaker. And I can see that there's an interesting correlation between the two. Um, I guess the, uh, the the overall experience of being a filmmaker it takes years to do something like this. And just just seeing this film here, how long did it take you from original vision to actually getting it on film? Well, um, to meet the audience, it took me three and a half years. Three and a half years. Um, maybe first year was to develop the story and also to apply for grants who can give me the money to even start the production. Because you need money to make a film, because since you want to um, hire good videographers, editors, you know, all kind of different aspects. But overall, it took me three and a half years. The, uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit here because I want to go back to the music for a moment because you have Danny Boy, you have um, Arvin, you know, Amazing Grace that I know of, but of course there's the Korean version of that. Um, I'm curious as to how you integrate the music and the culture because you're, you're going in between the two, not only in the languages and the history, but also in the music. Yeah, um, the music really transcends the culture, I think, yeah. yeah. And um, it's an effective way to showcase that Hawaii, United States in large, that we have such different, you know, many different cultures from different backgrounds, but we, like we, we really should support each other to, to advance, right, as a whole. And I just wanted to showcase that part by having, you know, American music, Korean music, and when it's rearranged like such harmoniously, it makes even better music than it's play only, you know, one at a time. And yeah, that's why I wanted to. I'm, I'm fascinated just now that I've seen it a couple times here and also online, is that idea of the immigration, the immigrant story that you tell, because I think on some level, so many of us with our grandparents or great grandparents coming in to America and having that story to tell, it makes, it makes me want to go back and kind of see and hear from, you know, at least read about that. From, from my own my own family's history, so I really thought that was very interesting. I noticed the butterfly that kind of comes in and out of these themes throughout the whole film. What was the um, significance of that, or creatively for you? Um, two things. One, I wanted to really honor those people who came before us. A lot of the Korean immigrants in the beginning, they couldn't go back to their homeland because they didn't have money to go back, basically. And Korea was under Japanese occupation. So through the filmmaking process, I wanted them to be in the film, to be part of the film as a butterfly, you know, freely uh, fly between Korea and the United States and, you know, anywhere they want to go to because they couldn't go in the past. Second of all, um, I wanted to make it visually appealing. The documentary is a documentary. Like, I, off, I showed a lot of black and white photos, right? It can be... A little bit boring, just be, just because the color wise, and by adding the butterflies, um, wanted to like aesthetically a little bit make it prettier. And this is the second story that I shared with you guys. First and the third story has a little bit of a different color of the butterfly as well. So it kind of connects the story in a different ways. It was my little way to um, make that up. I, I like the integration between the visuals, 
the archive footage, the animation, and the music. You were able to kind of make it flow and a, a great storyline for that. And um, I wanted to see, do we have any questions from the audience? Or is anybody, is anybody that wants to ask any questions? I can keep asking questions. We don't have any. Any Go question ahead. is yeah, fine. Any question, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Share your thoughts or... What is some advice you have for aspiring filmmakers? Some advice you have for aspiring filmmakers. The reason the 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 reason why I was able to do this for three years um, was because I found a story that really touches my heart. Otherwise, it's just a, it's a very um, hard hard work. So my advice would be: don't stop searching for the story that touches your heart. I'm sure there is something. For me, it was an immigration story, but there's so many stories to tell in this world and. And um, I was a news anchor for 15 years, and I knew that I liked being a news anchor, but not quite to the level that I was so satisfied. Every morning, I'd be happy to go to work. Now, of course, making the documentary, there are many times that I didn't want to wake up because there's so much pressure and all that, but I was so happy that I was able to find a story that I feel it's important to tell, and that's got my passion. So I'm so thankful that I didn't stop um, dreaming for finding a new story when I was a news anchor. So, you know, you guys are still young, your, your potential is like, you know what, I, like, I can't imagine, just try to find a story and that really touches your heart. And how? For me, I like writing. It doesn't have to be long. Like every day, look around and see if there's a, something that makes you feel excited. Just write one sentence, what that was to you. It can be a blue sky, it can be a friend who was helping you with something. Like when you have this collection of notes over time, you will see where your interest is and what you don't like to deal with and all that. So maybe that's the advice I can share with you. But do you have something? I mean, Mr. Nicole no, is no, no, I'm just here to ask questions, do you? I, I, I would also just say all of us have our own stories. I mean, every, every each one of you, that's what makes you unique. And so, that's what you're, that I would draw on the same thing, is that everyone has a unique story to tell, and how you tell it, whether it's in music and film and gaming and, and AR, VR, and, and all these different, uh, this today in this world, you have all these uh, uh, areas you can go into and tell your story, which is pretty fascinating at this point, because we didn't have that, at least when I was a kid. So. Any, other, any other questions? What inspired you to make this movie? Oh, good one. Good question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I shared a little bit of the story, the interview that I have with Mr. Donald Kim, right? Just like him, I when I realized that there's so much sacrifice and love that, um, or you know, before I came here, for us to be here today, I wanted to also contribute. To the society that we live in for the for you guys you know we have to be, I have a as an adult I feel like I have a responsibility to make a world a better place for you guys for the future generation and when you grow up you have a responsibility to contribute to the play to the society to make it a better place for your future generation your brothers and sisters and all that that's how history of the is. Any other questions from the audience? Um, I have one question for you. We can, oh, hold on. Did we have someone raise their hand? No, oh, yeah, go ahead. Over there. You guys are such while, a while we're waiting to get over the microphone there, I just, um, we, have, we have a background in journalism and music and film, and I'm just curious, you know, as a documentary filmmaker, you have a vision that you start out with that you're gonna make a film about this, but many times because it's documentary film, you're interviewing people and your story kind of goes off in, one, in another direction. So how true to what, you, what you've what you created, the vision, the original vision you had for Songs of Love and what it's, what it's become, was that, what was it, what was the difference there or was it? Right, there was obviously, maybe 70%, six to 70% was same as to what I originally planned. 
because as I research, as I make the film with, you know, when researcher joins me and when the videographer joins me and when I actually talk to the descendants, it it becomes a different story sometimes. And those are magical moments sometimes. I that think so, for example. Yeah, exactly. That's what documentary makes really special, you know, different from feature um, film that's already written, right? That's right. So, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Um, do we have another question? What were your first thoughts after you finished this movie? Um, that's a good question. I never had that question. Um, were you uh, nervous? No, I no. was, um, you know what, it's interesting. There was never end to the project. Right. I'm sure you, you, don't, you don't believe, even though it was being shown in the theaters in Korea and it came, first came out about a year ago through a film festival. I was still making the change with, like yesterday. <laughs> I, have to, I have to stop it. Like the change I made is something that you guys don't notice. Like something like a small, like a maybe font size or something. But I make that change because I do believe that all this effort that you put in, no matter if other people see it or not, make it, you know, progress. Like a little bit. It makes me feel better. <laughs> that I try my best, basically. So there's no end to it, but I can share how I felt when I when I first met the audiences like you guys. Um, every screening is special to me because I really learned a lot from the audiences like you guys. But when it showed in Korea, uh, which was like a month ago, I was really overwhelmed because I knew that this is gonna show in the United States, but to show it in the homeland where these people first left, they met their descendants from their homeland, you know, through the film. And I just felt the souls and I, it made me really feel grateful that I came this far to make that happen. And again, who would have thought, I never thought that I would show this in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, with the future generation, like you guys, this is such a, you know, amazing um, thing that happened to me. So dream big, you know, you guys, I never dreamed like this, but when I found a story that really touches my heart, you know, I was able to put in like all I had, you know, nobody told me to do it, but because I love the story. So I'm sure you guys have that story. Like, I'm not saying you have to become a filmmaker, but you know, whatever your passion is, don't stop looking for it. Don't stop searching. By the way, I love that question, and, and because it does make me think, as a filmmaker, whether it's an episodic feature or documentary, you always, well, many times you can't let it go. It's hard, it's hard to let that go, so you see one iteration of it, or you think it's done, and you're like, I could just take a, one more thing, one more step, I, and, and even when you're watching it, I think sometimes it's hard being the filmmaker going, I could have done this, but you have to let it go at some point, you know? So, anyway. Um, Yes, yeah. So what is, what's next? What's next? Um, I would love to make a film about like songs of love from Georgia, songs of love from you know California, songs of love from Osaka, songs of love from China, because Korean history, not just Korean, like wherever you're from, there is a story that you can find from any other you know places because they started their immigrations there. Like people don't stay still, right? We all started our own life somewhere. So I like to explore where some where Korean immigrants went to. Also, I like to showcase like your Japanese immigrant, like you know, um, or Chinese immigrant in Hawaii, like how they live together. Like, like immigration story is very universal, and there are a lot of um, good values in there. You know, that's that's interesting enough to to be shared. Yeah, that's great. Any other? What a great audience, by the way. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's great. All right. Um, I, 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 go ahead. Anybody else? Yeah, one more person right there. Go ahead. Um, what's the biggest obstacle you came upon when making this film? There are many obstacles, but the, the biggest thing is to to pursue it, in, whether it's individual organization, that this story is important. This is an important story to me, but I have to make sure, like I have to um, tell them, hey, this is important, so you please join me, whether it's a performer or like grant 
you know, I have to write a grant, right, to get the money, because you need the money to produce like this, but because it's an independent film, which is different from commercial film, where I'm not going to change my story, right? I'm not going to, you know, do a story that other people told me to do. Independent filmmaker is the people who tell the story that they believe it's important, right? So for me to do, be able to do that, for me to have that 250000 to make anything like this, I have to always write a proposal. I have to, you know, email performers, hey, this is important story. And so that part was the hardest, I think, like to, to persuade people, you know, like, please join me. Yeah, and, and my editing and all others wasn't that hard for me because I really wanted to do it so badly. But um, asking for help, asking for money, it's always the hardest, right? Yeah, and I would say in order to tell the story, on, on the big screen, you have to engage and get people interested in it. So you have to tell a story to do that. And so storytelling is so important in our culture, just in order to get money or to get buy-in from people to create something, whether it's a feature, episodic music, what, ha what have you, you have to get people on board and excited about being interested in what you're doing, whether it's with money or just with help. Exactly, yeah. And then the, also the hard part that people don't think is to be able to meet the audience. Yeah. So even if your product is, it got you know some good awards or what, still it's hard to meet the audience. Like I was lucky to have this um, theater there in Korea, but in the United States, I'm still looking for a way to be, you know, wider audience by, you know, talking to PBS or, you know, Netflix and all that. So every stage is not that easy, but um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's fun, interesting, because um, nowadays there's so many information online. So I really learn, you know, from scratch, but, you know, it's really rewarding and the potential, like, you know, you guys can do whatever you want to do if you have a passion, really. Definitely. How are we doing on time? Question up there? Yep, okay. Uh, what was the reaction like from your friends and family after you released the movie? Um, I think they were they were surprised because um, they only knew me as a journalist for many years. And when you were making the film, like I do Instagram all that, but they didn't know that I what, what I was doing actually because all those days and months I would just stay in my room and doing editing and writing. So after three years, when I finally came out, you know, being a news anchor, you would see me on TV every day. But then being a filmmaker, I'm like you know in a dark room all by myself, <laughs> writing and editing and all that. So I think they were a little bit shocked and oh, this is what you've been doing for those three years. Yeah, but there were a lot of them were supportive and. And because Koreans, a lot of them in Korea don't know about Koreans' history in, in, uh, in Hawaii and the United States, so they were happy that, you know, the story was told. But not everybody was supportive, obviously, but um, at that point, in, uh, nowadays, I, I don't, how do I say it, like, I don't care so much about it, because you will always have people who will criticize your work or, you know, like, but if you know that you try your best, and if you know that this is important to your story, you're hurt, then it doesn't matter what other people think. Yeah, and I would just add that, you know, when, when my parents, when I wanted to go into filmmaking, they had no clue or idea as to what that was. And so my mom, for years, even when I became a producer in Chicago, I'd take her on set and she'd ask what I'm doing exactly <laughs> as a producer, which is, you know, many people ask me that, but they, she would tell her friends that I get coffee for people. Okay. And that was my job. So again, it's just, you know, it, it, it takes a while for, for your family to kind of come around sometimes, but then when they see what you're doing, and, and obviously with this one, they must be proud, yeah. you know, of what you've created. Yeah. But like, exactly. Uh, um, I think my mom is pr proud because she can finally see my work in theater, but, but I wanna um, tell you that Sometimes, like my first work, or there are so many work that didn't get any recognition, but that if you try your best to do something, really it doesn't matter what comes after. Like the fact that you put in so much time in your effort, you know that you are someone who does that, who, who can do that. So um, like it took me 20 years for me to create a story that was you know, seen by some people. 
So um, just you know, be patient and you know, work hard, and you you get what you want. And it goes back to that idea with music. You, you worked very hard in music for many years, and then that led you to this career. So it's really just putting energy and time into into something you love. And I think that that probably paves a path or a, a roadmap to, to where you go. I think so, yeah. But you never know until never know. you get to the point. Yeah, yeah. Unless you put the work in, you know, that you don't know what doors will open. Right. So yeah. you have to try hard and make whatever resources you could, because when the door is open, you have to have the resources to go That's for right. it. That's right. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just let's let's uh, let's thank uh, Jin Young Lee one more time. And thank you guys. You guys were a great audience and very great questions. Have a good rest of the day. And also, let's give another round of applause to the doctor. Uh, and also, uh, yes. Thank you so much for. Thank you everyone. Thank you. 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 Th